So now we're gonna get to one of the exciting parts about HTML and that's bringing in CSS. So that's bringing in styling into your HTML code. And what styling does is it really does bring out your HTML structure and gives you the ability to move different elements around and add a whole bunch of more user-friendly, readable type formatting to your HTML. So you're no longer gonna have this plain, boring old HTML, and it does give you, introduce the ability to bring in color and as well as a new look and styling to your web content. Uh, so the way to bring in style, there's actually gonna be three different ways. So what you can do is you can do this styling as attributes within your HTML elements. And essentially, it, all three different ways are gonna work the same way, uh, but there's gonna be definitely advantages and disadvantages to each different way. Uh, so yeah, so the first way, and you can add styling to any one of these elements within HTML. So I'm just pick the property, but I could also do div, I could do the h2, the ul, and so on. So any one of these I can add styling to, and all you have to do is do style equals, and then just quote it out. And any of the information here contained within styling, this is gonna be CSS. And with CSS, so we've got different properties for CSS, and each property needs to contain a value for us to be able to understand and for the browser to be able to render it, that out properly as intended. We'll be going over some of the more commonly used CSS, so we can add in color. So again, CSS brings in color into your, your design. Uh, so here we've got the color picker, and we can do an RGB color, we can do a hex color, and also you've got these built-in colors. So if I wanted to do this bluish color, I could do it this way. And I'm just gonna go back out and refresh it. And you see that we've instantly got some color onto our HTML code there. Uh, so there's also different ways with color. So there's these built-in colors, so we can just do blue. And uh, so this is relatively new as well. So these are just standard web blues. So if you don't wanna be looking up that hex, hex color, and if you just wanna be using a default color, you can, pick, uh, you can pick it this way. Really with style, there is a lot you can do. So you can see here that uh, within uh, Dreamweaver, it's given me just a ton of options here. So we can do things like we can do a border. So again, we've got that ability for a color. Um, so we can do, just gonna do the default solid and I'm just gonna set it as one pick. And now we, we go back out here, you can see that again, there's a lot of different things. So it's really bringing that out. And another common one uh, commonly used is background. And so, so with background and as well with border, there's these kind of uh, combined uses of it. Uh, so you can actually split it out and you can do background color and uh, background image and all of that. Or you could combine it into just background and here you see that you've got an option to center, you've got a URL and you can link out to an image. And then as well, you've got that color there. So this is, um, I'm just gonna do it kind of a grayish color there. So another point when you, when you are doing uh, styling, uh, when you're initially setting up your site and you're not really sure about what color scheme you're using, uh, the best way to go is usually to do different shades of gray. And then uh, that gives you the option to kind of build out your site uh, in that type of format. So I'm just gonna change this to white. So again, this is gonna be the font color and I'm just gonna have a black border and I'm gonna have a gray, uh, grayish background. And so, so again, we've got a lot of different options with styling. You can even go, uh, so I'm just gonna do styling down here, so I'm picking out a different one. Uh, you can do things like, uh, so there's uh, borders we had looked at, there's um, 
Also, there's fonts, so we can do font family. And here we're getting an option here to pick out a default font family. But again, there's a whole bunch of different options with this. And then to separate out all of the different styles, all you do is uh, add the semicolon, and that gives you the ability to separate all, out all the different styles. And uh, so you've got all of these different brand new ones too with uh, HTML5 or CSS3 that are brought in. You've also got this ability for text align. So we're just going to do centering of the text. And just to show you how far we've gotten with this. So over here, we've centered the text. Uh, you can see that the font face is different as well. The typography is different. And uh, we also... Uh, maybe we could just do size as well. So that's another common common one that's used. So we've got uh, font family, font size, font uh, weight. So font size, that's going to make it really big. Uh, and also with the font sizes uh, for responsiveness, you should be using that EM instead of the PIX. Uh, so one EM is equivalent to 16 PIX. And I'm just going to resize it even bigger. And we can see that uh, whenever we do change that styling, uh, the output uh, that's being rendered out is always changing as well. Uh, so again, there's a, quite a lot you can do with styling. Um, and we're going to, uh, we're just showing you the way to implement styling. Uh, so another way to implement styling is to add style as an element. So, um, and then this is similar to adding a style sheet, uh, YL instead of LY. Uh, so here we can actually select. So I'm just going to select this class. Uh, classes are selected with a period and then uh, whatever is between this bracketed area uh, is going to be what um, this particular class is going to get as uh, styling values. So here I can uh, just quickly add in something like I do the background color uh, so we can able to distinguish all the different lessons. And now I can go back out, I can refresh and I can see that this gets applied to all the uh, all the all the elements that have that class. Uh, so also um, here we, if we want to pick out different uh, by IDs. Uh, so if we've got so here we've got a div and we've got an ID. Uh, so this is a main container. Uh, so again, same format where we've got this bracket. And then for the container itself, uh, we can add in, maybe we'll just add in a border. And that's going to do a color of blue or purple and I'm going to do dotted and I'm going to do two picks. And similar to when you're doing the style attribute here, uh, you're just separating them out by the semicolon. So now this, this border is going to be applied to this entire container. So we go back out and we refresh it. We see that in fact it does get applied to the entire container. And then lastly, you can pick out style according to the tag. So if I want it to have all the divs, particular style, or maybe we can just do all of the paragraphs, um, and we want to have a particular style applied to every individual paragraph, and it's going to do border again. It's going to change that color of the border so that we're able to distinguish it. Maybe do a darker gray there, and uh, I'll do a dashed, and I'm going to do three picks. So that really does stand out. So obviously we're going to be changing this, but this is just for the purposes of this lesson uh, so that we can see how that uh, the styling is getting applied and how it's being able to distinguish all these different elements in HTML. Again, with styling comes a whole bunch of options. And then, of course, lastly, uh, you have the ability to link out to a style sheet. And the way that you do that is you place that within the head. 
and this is going to link out to a style sheet and the location of the style sheet is going to be in a folder called CSS and the file is just going to be na named main.css and then this contain this can contain the same similar styling that we have here as well and then that all will get applied to that entire page and essentially uh, when we had mentioned before benefits uh, so linking out to a style sheet is going to be probably the best way to go because this gives you the ability to change all of the pages that are linking to this one style sheet, this one main.css. And if I change lesson, if I've got all three of these pages linking out to it and I make a change within this style sheet, this is going to propagate out to all the pages at once. And uh, that's why there's the best benefit and the best way to do it is to link out to a separate style sheet uh, so that if you do have a change you all of a sudden want to change your background to a polka dotted background you don't have to go into each and every web page uh, and change that and update the background of maybe the container you'd have to update it here and then go to index 2 and index 3 you can just update it in one place within that style sheet uh, and then secondly, um, if you do have particular styling that you're maybe applying just to that page and you want to add in that styling really quickly, uh, this uh, is a way to go where you're adding it on the page itself but within the head. And then lastly, um, which is the least flexible way, is to add styling to each uh, additional or each element, of each one of your HTML elements. And again, this is the least effective way to go and it's the least user friendly because when you're coming back and you're trying to, you're looking at your website and you're wondering why you have this border around here and you check your style sheet and you have, you don't see it in there and then you check your page and you don't see it immediately at the top, you have to actually go down and look through all of this HTML code. And sometimes when you're writing HTML code, it can get very lengthy. Uh, so this really isn't the best way to go, but if you're applying a particular uh, value, a particular property and value, and you want to really just apply it to that one, uh, this is a way to be able to do that as well.